Okay, so let's go ahead and close out of this for a second. We're going to go ahead and build something new from scratch. Um, so in this case, we're going to go and build a, an open PO report. So let me go ahead and just start with a new file. And at this point, I want to go into my Power Pivot. And I'm going to go ahead now. You'll notice here these different data sources. So um, if you've got data feeds or from a text file, other data sources would be most commonly used if you have data residing in different formats. You'll see here, you know, Oracle, DB2, OLEDB, ODBC. So this might be the way that you might connect. In this example, we're actually connecting to SQL Server. So I'm going to go ahead and use this from SQL Server database option. So next thing you know, you can actually pull in and this and suck into the Power Pivot full tables at a time, or you can create as a query that may be used. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and pull, um, let's call this open POs. If, again, if you knew the SQL statement, and this is kind of where it gets a little more complicated. Most typical business users don't just have these type of SQL statements sitting on the back of their mind. So this would be where maybe IT involvement comes into play or like a preferred strategy is be a quick launch. I'm going to go ahead and choose design here. Uh, in essence, it takes me back. And this is where our BI quick launch includes these prepackaged views for JD Edwards. Some of these are kind of reclassified views. So if I click on one of these, you know, you might see a breakdown of the logical names for different uh, fields within a table. If I go down here, we've also got some data model views as well. In this case, I'm going to grab this purchasing. I want to pull in a few things. Uh, in this case, maybe my address name for supplier. I want to pull in, let's see, my amount open. I'm going to pull in my branch plant, branch plant description, maybe my order date, and I want to pull in item description, and in this case maybe I want to also pull in my amount, my units open. Okay. So if I were pulling in from multiple sources, multiple tables, you can go ahead and bring in those multiple tables and then you create relationships, and it would then, you know, you could join the tables together. This data model view that I'm pulling from already is doing some of that for us. We can also add a quick filter. In this case, I want to add a filter on my amount open. And I want this to be is not zero because we're going to do open POs. Okay. So now, in essence, I've defined what I need. Choose OK. It creates the SQL statement for me. I can validate that. It is valid. Hit finish. At this point, it's going to go out there to the source, grab the data, and bring that in to my Power Pivot. Okay, so now I've got my result set, and at this point I can go in and start building out my uh, my, my charts and my pivot tables. So if I go to the power pivot or the pivot table here, uh, maybe I want to do a side by side chart and table on a new worksheet. Okay, so if I select a chart, I can then define what do I want for my chart. In this case, maybe I want a chart by supplier and I want to see my open amount by supplier. Okay. If I want to see that, um, go ahead, I can change the chart type to maybe a pie chart. Okay. If I go to my design here, maybe I want to go and reformat that. Okay. Let's go ahead and increase the size of this chart. Okay. So right now we've got, in essence, a pie chart with our amount open by supplier. If I go to the other table, maybe we want to see by branch plant. So if I want to see, okay, let's grab branch plant and amount. Okay. Let's go ahead and format that. Okay. So maybe we want to see within each branch plant, maybe a breakdown by item or something. Okay, so now um, if I want to then go and add, let's say, amount again. Maybe I want to add a percent to that. So I want to do a percentage of my total. If I just click on the amount to the right and go and do show value as percentage of column total. Right, it'll go ahead and break that down for me. Put that percent. 
Okay. Uh, if I wanted to then, let's say I'm looking at a specific amount here, and I want to dive into the details. If I go ahead and click on a value, right click on that to show details, it'll actually bring me right back to the underlying data of the table that got brought in from J.D. Edwards. So you can kind of get back to the source. That's kind of how the, the drill down works there. Okay. Um, you can also go in, as you have these different levels, if I go ahead and right click on this and choose field uh, settings in layout and print, I can display the subtotals you have on the top or the bottom. There's also just the pivot controls can do that as well. So in essence, um, that's kind of a power uh, pivot in a nutshell. Uh, one thing we'll do before uh, we brought this data in, and let's say all of a sudden now you realize, uh-oh, I need company in my grid. How about I'm going to introduce a new object, just like we kind of did on the, uh, real quickly on the finance side. I go back to Power Pivot, Power Pivot window, and we go back to our design and go back to my table properties and click on and go to design again. It's going to take me back to the screen and then if I go back down to where we had, let's say I want to add company maybe company and company name to my object list. So it's now going to be objects that I have available to me. I choose OK and save. I'll now go and refresh that data set. There's my company and value. If I go back to my spreadsheet, you'll notice up here on options says power pivot data was modified. So until I go ahead and refresh that, once I hit refresh, those objects are now available for me to go ahead and pull. At this point, I can go ahead and uh, maybe see a company slicer, or maybe we'll do a horizontal slicer this time. Okay. So if we click on our slicer and company, we can then see the breakdown of our open PO. Okay. If let's say we want, and we brought in company and, and uh, company name, let's say we want to create an object in our grid that's the combination of company and name. So if I go back to my power pivot window and go to my um, Right over here, I can add a column, right? Or I can go anywhere in this and insert a column. So if I go ahead and um, you know, I'll call this company and name, okay? And then while I've got that selected, I can go here and say this is equal to my company, and, and this is kind of just normal Excel functionality. So now that company and name, sometimes you may want uh, some of those concatenated objects together. For example, on the finance side, it might be a business unit object and sub, or object and subsidiary and description, things like that. So if I go back to my uh, worksheet, again, power pivot data was modified. Let's refresh. And now we've got um, our company and name available for us as well. 